Whenever Stack Graphics creates a graph, it uses your data to generate default scaling and titles for that graph. It also uses something called your graphics profile to set the fonts and colors and line types and point types and things like that. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can change all of that once a graph has been created. By the way, the data we're looking at is data from a shelf life study. In this data set, samples were taken of a product anywhere from about 8 weeks after it was produced out to about 42 weeks. The amount of available chlorine in each of those samples was measured, and now we've gone ahead and fit a curve to it. This output it was generated by what we call the simple regression procedure. The model that was fit is actually a reciprocal X model. Looking at the second line of the title, you see it actually expresses chlorine as a function of 1 over weeks. To dress up the graph a little bit for publication purposes, the first thing I'm going to do is take the graph and click with my left mouse somewhere in the middle of the graph. I'm then going to pull the graph over to the right which will give me a little bit more room for the graphics options dialog box I'm going to call up. I'll now go anywhere within the window, press the right mouse button, and on the pop-up menu choose the third option which is graphics options. This brings up a tab dialog box with various tabs. I'm going to drag that to the upper left hand corner so we can see the changes as we make them. The first tab on the Graphics Options dialog box is labeled Layout. This lets me change things like the style of the axes, the um, background colors, the border color, and so forth. I'm going to press the button labeled Background, which will bring up a box with various colors. If I click on the yellow box, then press OK, then press Apply, you'll see that it adds a yellow background to my graph. The second tab is the grid tab. Here I can add a grid to the graph. Horizontal, vertical, or both. I think I'll have it uh, drawn in both directions. The middle button here will give me a grid that looks somewhat dashed, I believe. Well, let's hit apply and see. Yeah, that's a, that's a dashed line. I think that grid's a little dark though, so I'll push the colors button and perhaps choose an orange button. Yes, that looks a little bit better. Now as far as the lines are concerned, if I click on the third tab, you can actually see two types of lines on this graph. The blue line in the middle is the line of best fit, what's called the least squares regression line. The outer lines are actually 95% limits prediction limits for new observations. Now I can change either of those lines by clicking on the appropriate radio button and then picking a different line type or perhaps a different line thickness. What I'm going to do is actually drag this line thickness button over a little bit and hit apply. That gives special emphasis to the uh, center line. On the points tab I'll be able to change the type and style and size of the points. In this case, I think I'll just click the checkbox that says fill points and press apply so that the points become solid and stand out a little better. If I want to change the top title, I can click on that tab and you'll see actually there are two lines for the title. The first currently says plotted fitted model the second says brace 3 brace. Now that second line brace 3 brace, that's an indication that the output, the title, is being automatically generated by the procedure that's being run. In this case it corresponds to the equation of the fitted model which I don't really want to change. However the first line of the title I think I will change. I think I'll call this shelf life study a little bit more informative. I think I'll also press the button labeled Line 1 Fonts. 
This will let me do things like change the size of the title. I think I'll make it size 14. Perhaps I'll also make it bold italic. And down here where it says color, I think I'll choose a purple title. I'll then press OK, Apply, and you can see it's changed that top title. As far as the x-axis is concerned, if we click on that tab, uh, right now it's labeled Weeks. That was automatic. I think I'll make it a little bit more informative. This is the age in weeks of the product. I can also change the scaling. Right now it's going from 0 to 50 by units of 10. I think that's actually pretty good. We can also change from arithmetic to some other type of scaling if we want. Okay, let's push apply to make that happen. Then the y-axis, the title there is currently chlorine. I think that's all right. The scaling I don't much like though. It's going from 0.38 to 0.5 by 0.02. I think I'll make it 0.35 to 0.5 by 0.05. Now one thing to be careful of when you change the scale of a graph. Down near the bottom right there's a set of radio buttons that tell the program what to do when the data change. And graphs in stack graphics are always hot. If for some reason you went back to the data sheet, made a change to the data, and then came back to this graph, the graph would update automatically to reflect the new data. Now, I can have the scaling adapt to changes in the data, or if I click the second radio button, it'll hold the scaling constant, which is what I want to do in this case. I'll now press apply, and you'll see my new scale. So far, all of the changes I've made are temporary. Temporary in the sense that they apply just to this graph. The next graph I create will be back to the original default colors and point types and so forth. That is, unless I go and click on the Profile tab and tell it to save these new settings. Now, I can save the new settings in one of 12 user profiles. I'll do so by first choosing a radio button. And then if I want this to become the new defaults, check the box that says Make Default. And then press the button labeled Save As. I'll now give this profile a name. I think I'll call it For Curves. So I'll know what type of graph it's appropriate for. And then I'll press OK. As the message box says, these current Graphic settings have now been saved. Therefore, I can go press OK, OK, and they've been saved away. And actually, be, will be the defaults for my next graph. Now, next thing I do is drag the graph back to the middle. Let's see if I can get it positioned well. Um, so I have it in the middle of the screen. I can actually make the entire graph a little larger, too. You'll notice four marks at the corners of the graph. If I go ahead and grab one of those marks, I could stretch out the graph and make it a little larger. Use up a little more of the real estate. One final change to make. I want to add an annotation to this graph, indicating that I believe I see two outliers. There are two points on this graph, both at 18 weeks, which are above that 95% prediction limit. I'm not sure they're in outliers, but they could be. So I'll tell you what. I'll go up to the Analysis Toolbar, find the button with the ABC on it, which is the Add Text button, and press it. This will bring up a out, um, <laughs> dialog box on which I can type some text I'd like to add to the screen. For example, I'm going to type possible outliers and press OK. Now initially this put the new text underneath the top title, but I'm just going to grab it with my mouse and drag it where I want it. 
So there's my new graph, looking much better than it looked before. In the next video, I'll show you how I can now save this and put it in a document or send it off for publication.